ready to begin turning the bow tie blank and I wanted to show you real quick, take a look at how much material has got to be turned away. So we really do need to uh, turn as opposed to sand because it would take you forever to sand that much material off your blank. Um, I'm gonna use a skew for my blank. Uh, I know a lot of people like to use carbide. It will work. Just be extremely careful and use extremely light cuts because your carbide is very aggressive and uh, these blanks are super delicate. I apologize for the squealing noise you're hearing in the background. I believe that the uh, bearings are going out in my uh, live center. So we're gonna have to replace that uh, soon because uh, just don't wanna listen to that squeal every time I turn. I got the tool marks out of the blank. I'm just gonna sand back and forth with the grain to take out any centrifugal marks. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, this blank has Paduk in it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, grab some denatured alcohol. I'm going to go ahead and clean the blank. And then I'm going to put one coat of thin CA on it uh, as a sanding sealer uh, so that I don't bleach out and turn these uh, maple pieces um, pink with the Paduk. I'm always nervous about doing this because uh, the Paduk can actually bleed uh, if you have too much... Um, too much of the denatured alcohol on your rag and we just don't want to do that that looks pretty good all right let me dust off any of the the uh, paper towel dust I'm also looking for scratches that I might have left from the uh, 120 grit blank looks great I'm gonna go ahead and put a single coat of medium CA on it then we're going to uh, continue sanding uh, through all of our grits with 220 on down to 600 um, and we'll come back and take a look at the blank at that point. My blank has been sanded to 600. I've cleaned it with denatured alcohol and I'm ready now to apply the first coat of my CA finish. And uh, you can see this blank is really gonna pop. I'm gonna shut the camera off, finish my CA regiment, and I'll come back and show you the blank right before I begin micro meshing. The blank is looking really nice. I got it off of the uh, nonstick bushings, squared the ends to get rid of the CA glue fingernails, and I've got it back on the turning bushings. We're ready now to micro mesh it. You see how this line is kind of fuzzy where the light's reflecting on the blank? When I get done micro meshing, it will be a clear line from end to end. 15 seconds on each pad. You see the slurry building up on the back? That's what you want to see. There's my 15 seconds. And now we're ready to move to the next pad. Notice I wiped uh, the pad between, um, or I'm sorry, I wiped the blank between the first pad and the second. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off, finish out the other seven pads. 
and then we'll be back to show you what the blank looks like before we apply some wax and buff it up. I finished micromeshing the blank. Notice how clear that line is. Now I'm just rolling the blank and watching the line. Any imperfections in the blank are going to show up. That line is going to be, it's not going to be straight across the blank. You'll see those imperfections. And quite honestly, I don't see any. I think this blank turned out gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead now and supply some a Renaissance wax. I'm going to use my finger because there's no uh, grit in my finger. So it'll put a nice uh, wax finish on the blank. And uh, we'll take it to the buffing wheels and clean it up. I'm really happy how my blank turned out. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this pin so that we can use the kit for this blank. Now we're going to take a look at the blank and there are no blemishes on this blank whatsoever. It's absolutely gorgeous, but what I do notice is in the wood, there's a little spot there. It looks like it could have been a knot or something. So I think I'm going to lay the clip right here just to kind of, so that knot doesn't show up because the rest of the maple pieces look absolutely gorgeous. We'll remove that. I'm going to leave a bushing in this end. And the reason why I like to leave the bushings in the opposite end of my pin when I press is because even though this is supposed to protect your pin, it's still hard and so is the aluminum ram. And if you get this on there at a little bit of an angle, you can crush the outside edge of your pin. I mean, you see how thin that wood is? So you can crush that. And at this point in the game, you do not want to ruin your pin because you've already put so much time and effort into creating it. I almost forgot, before I put the uh, cap and clip into the pin, I want to use a deburring tool and I'm going to deburr the outside, or, or I'm sorry, the inside of my tube. And what that does is it takes off any rough edges so that I am able to more easily press. See how that's got a smaller section on it? It'll allow me to more easily press that into the blank because there are no rough areas and it's put a tiny bit of a chamfer on the end of the tube. Also, if there was any CA glue that managed to make it into the tube, uh, that would help scrape it away so that I get an easier fit um, of my uh, component and less chance if, if there is CA in there, pay close attention to that because if you got CA in the inside of your blank or epoxy or anything else, um, it will when you press your component in, wherever that glue is, it will make the blank, I'm sorry, the tube need to expand in order to accept the component and the wood is so thin, it will split your wood. Part of the reason is I'm doing this from the side so that you can view it in the video. Uh, normally when you press a pin, you're pressing it straight on and you don't have this issue. Let's take a look at this blank. Let me get a focus here. Take a look at that. What a great fit. And I'm just checking around this uh, area of the blank to make sure I did not split that thin material. It looks like we did a great job. I've got my nib section. We're gonna insert that, test it. We have not very nice functioning of the pin. What a gorgeous pin. I am super happy with this one. I would really like to thank you for joining me for the turning of this gorgeous Kenneth Wines blank. Now, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a clarification. When I started this video, um, I might have mentioned that Kenneth is no longer going to be uh, producing these blanks. I had a chance to meet him at a recent pin show and I learned that he has sold the rights, all of his patterns and the rights to all of his laser cut patterns to a gentleman named Rick Cobb. Now I will put all of the information I have for Rick in the comments below. Contact him at, that, uh, at those particular outlets and he can show you, this is just one of I don't know how many patterns there are dozens of patterns these laser cut pins are phenomenal rick is making them to the same specifications that kenneth made them to and they are absolutely gorgeous so for all of your laser cut blank needs get in touch with rick i would like to thank you for joining this shop today i want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening